Well, this was actually the, the first uh, residency program at the Health Science Center in 1923. Francis Reichman, uh, who ultimately became a Brigadier General in the Army, uh, was the first uh, dental resident was actually taught a lot of the uh, principles of jaw fractures and those sorts of things by general surgeons, and that was in 1923. So we're really the oldest uh, training program west of the Mississippi. I would put it up there within the top five residencies in the country. And, and the reason for that is the diversity of care that, and, that the residents get to see. They get to see pediatrics, they get to see cleft lip and palate, craniofacial surgery, a ton of orthognathic surgery, dental alveolar surgery. We have uh, experts in cosmetic, full body cosmetic surgery. And then we also um, have an uh, expert in dental implants. But we here are able to do um, implants that uh, I, I don't think a lot of other programs are doing, using extra maxillary sites. So, you know, if there's not enough bone and the patient doesn't want um, uh, to wait for a bone graft, we're placing pterygoid implants, we're placing zygomatic implants. We're giving them the, uh, the opportunity to have that full arch prosthetic um, in a day, using their residual bone uh, where sometimes it's very difficult to do. Um, and of, of course, the cleft lip and palate um, exposure that the residents are given, um, it's very, very rare to have a program where uh, you have even exposure to it at all, much less be a part of, of several of the, uh, the surgeries that um, are undertaken throughout the, uh, throughout the life of a cleft patient. Our program is a uh, four-year program. We take three residents a year. Our uh, resident pool is just chock full of bright young people. So that's 160 or so applicants for three positions, uh, which it ultimately becomes pretty competitive when you think about your t uh, you're, you're really dealing with the top 10% of any dental school class. There are several things that a, a good resident should, should be. One, they should be self-driven and motivated. Uh, they have to understand that, you know, in a residency education, you're not going to be spoon-fed information all the time. You have to be a self-motivated learner and take the questions that come up on a daily basis and read about them and then discuss them with the faculty to be able to grow intellectually as a surgeon. Uh, the residents are our right hand and they learn by seeing patients with us, operating patients with us, and are getting the chance to be involved in the daily care that we take for our patients. They get uh, six months of anesthesia and because of our pediatric um, specialization by two of our faculty doctors, uh, they end up doing six weeks of pediatric anesthesia uh, and the rest of the time is on adult anesthesia. They get uh, medicine, general medicine rotations. They spend four months on general surgery, uh, of which one of those months is on pediatric surgery, which also gives them more pediatric experience. Uh, additionally, we have an anesthesiologist that uh, comes into our office and we do peds anesthesia in the office uh, so that they can have even more experience uh, treating children over time. And then we have a plastic surgery rotation. We have the honor of having them for a month and it really is special because during their third year they get to spend uh, their entire time operating with us and really work on their skills and develop those skills which is very unlike many other programs even where I trained um, where when you're on a general surgery or a plastic surgery rotation so often you get little time in the operating room you're mostly on the floor taking care of sick patients or writing notes here it's quite the opposite they get to spend their time really working on their hand skills and taking care of patients and really operating you know the residents have tremendous clinical material to be able to work with and they've got faculty that are mentoring them all the way through from the very beginning to the very end of the program and they're moving through experiences that start out as more straightforward ones to ones that are incredibly complex. They're exposed to multiple surgeons teaching them multiple ways to be able to try to do the same types of procedures. So you're not just seeing it from one viewpoint, you see it from very many. There's a lot of, of outside self-study and, and that's why we're looking for individuals who are really self-motivated. Uh, the individual that's going to be successful here is a person that can pull themselves up by bootstraps, can, you know, can learn new concepts, assimilate those concepts uh, to operating new experiences, 
and, and become a, a lifelong learner, because that's really what surgery is. You have to be a lifelong learner. We have great mentors. Uh, the breadth of knowledge that, that each of our attendees possesses is incredible, and gleaning that from them over these four years is, is invaluable. Um, they really take you under their, their wing and, and want to prepare you for, for life on your own in this specialty. Oklahoma City is a delightful community to live in. There's a lot to do here for young people. This is definitely a family town. It's a safe place to raise your children. And it's a great place to work and to learn. I laugh because you know we're, we're considered a flyover state, but we're truthfully probably one of the best kept secrets in the country relative uh, to our clinical program. And I think when people uh, come here and they see what they do, they see our facilities, uh, I think they're uh, we're, we're very pre pleasantly surprised and I think that that's one of the reasons that we get such a tremendous number of applicants. This is a, a very supportive and educationally strong program, uh, that it's a very comprehensive program and that it prepares our residents to be able to go out and practice uh, without any issues after they, after they leave. Our residents, when they leave here, they're sought after by private practices academic practices, and they can go into those situations and they know what they're doing. They've seen the cases, and so they're prepared for boards. We have 100% board success uh, with our residents, and, and that speaks loudly for the program.